there's a reciprocity between death and life. One informs the other. And I think the problem with humanity is that the life part of the equation is not respected the way it should be. Human beings still now are incredibly destructive and disrespectful of, of how precious and unique and how fragile life is. People keep on saying after every major war, never again, we can never let this happen again. And of course, in another country, in another part of the world, it happens again. You feel a disillusionment about that, or I have. But within that whole pathos, that darkness, there's always individual people who choose peace over conflict. They are the light and spirit, the true heroes of the world. When I was young, I would really get angry about the way the world was and about people who were suffering when they really didn't need to suffer. And photography was kind of a way of me channeling that anger into something that was more constructive. Telling the stories of those vulnerable people in the hope of building some sort of bridge of understanding Being in Warzones for 10 years took its toll. I had chronic nightmares for years and years, waking up in the middle of the night and being terrified and sweating and screaming. With all the death that I've seen, it's a confirmation of your own mortality. I'm probably in the last chapter of my life. You start thinking about death. And being in Nepal, it's, it's really interesting just seeing the way that they've weaved in, not only into their own spirituality, their own religion, but into their daily lives. This is the only one place in Nepal mm -hmm. so we can see life and death together. Hindus believe that this is not our final life. When you see their uh, burning dead body, you mm -hmm. can see five elements together. First, the light dead body, mm -hmm. that's fire. Fire goes back to fire. Smoke rises up with yes. the help of air. And the cloud, it takes form of sky. All the ashes, they sweep into the river right up to cremation. Uh -huh. Water and the small pieces of uh, bone gets to the earth, back to five different elements. Then person's gonna have another life. A photographer making pictures of that if it's done in a respectful way, and if you've asked, and you know, it's fine for you to be there. They're absolutely at one with it. Taking photographs, it is not considered to be taboo because you are learning something from death as well. Death is part of our life. When you're in these intimate situations, I find with Fuji cameras, especially a camera like the X-T4, is that it's so small, it's not imposing. You can float with it. What I really love about it is the film simulation. And one that I've been using, which is new, is the bleach bypass. The color is not too saturated or overstated. That, for me, is what I want, because in documentary photography, it's reality that you're photographing. It's unguarded moments of humanity, and it's ebbing and flowing. The things that made me angry when I was young they're still going on, it's the same stupid dance, but I don't think hope has been snuffed out. Hope is all that we have left. And it's those individual people, many of them who I've documented, that hold life up as something that's extraordinarily precious and should be loved, you know, and enjoyed until it ends. Love is God, God is love.